Well, today's the day you can eat, and it's a special day. <laughs> okay. So, we lost our Madunga players. Oh, there he is. Oh, uh, you're, you're so uh, humble, I don't even see you. He's hidden behind the He was just sticking out a little bit. <laughs> According to Napoleon, it's not even doesn't even exist. <laughs> maybe he's, maybe he took birth in the UK. <laughs> Yeah, he said, we don't worship like that. We keep the, our worshipable objects in a nice place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's probably what the, the guy deserves anyway. <laughs> it's probably what he is now. <laughs> Yeah, material life, you, you become ashes, stool, or what's the other one? Dust. Yeah. Your body gets turned into three. You can look in the mirror, you look in the mirror and you see which, which one you want your body to be. Ashes, stool, or dust. <laughs> and you think, oh, hmm. Let me see if there's some really nice birds out there. So maybe bird stool might be the best because at least people will get to see it. <laughs> if you're just ashes and ashes, nobody cares. And if you're dust, nobody sees you. <laughs> Wonderful. Krishna's joke, huh? Okay, so here we go. Nihaya ha 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 Good 
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So this is Canto 7, Chapter 13, The Behavior of a Perfect Person. This is verses 38, 39, and we'll do 40 today for the class. <coughs> so 38's on the board. Okay. Quachit alpam quachit buri. Bunjain Bunjain Nam Swava Vaz Swaduva Quachit Bori Guno Petam Bunahinam Uta Quachit Quachit Alpam Quachit Bori Bunjanam Swadva Swaduva Quachit Bori Guno Petam Gunahinam Muta Quachit Quachit Alpam Quachit Bori Bunjanam Swadva Swaduva Quachit Bori Guno Petam Gunahinam Ute Uta Pachit Quachit <laughs> Quite shit, yeah. Yeah, that's an easy, it's a nice translation too, okay. So, yeah, anyone else want to risk their life and try it? Quachit, sometimes. <coughs> Alpam, very little. Quachit, sometimes. <coughs> Bori, a great quantity. Bunje, I eat. Anam, food. Swadu, palatable. Aswadu, stale. Va, either. Quachit, sometimes. <coughs> Bori, great. Guna upetam, a nice flavor. Guna hinam, without flavor. Uta, weather. Quachit, <coughs> sometimes. Stradaya, respectfully. Uparitam, brought by someone. Kwapi, sometimes. 
Kadachit sometimes Manavarjitam offered without respect Bunje Ait Bumtwa after eating Ata as such Kasmin Chit sometimes in some place Diva during the daytime Naktam or at night Yadritschaya as it is available so I didn't know this verse was about me but anyway sometimes eat a very small quantity and sometimes I eat a great quantity sometimes the food is very palatable and sometimes it is stale Sometimes prashad is offered with great respect and sometimes food is given neglectfully. Sometimes I eat during the day and sometimes at night. Thus I eat what is easily available. Hare Krishna. Any questions? Okay. Om Namo Bhagavad Okay. <laughs> it, it's 2 o'clock in the morning today. 2 a.m. is the offering. Because he says he eats at night too, so. Shaumam dukulum ajinam chirava kalam evava vastyan yar apisam prata dishabuk tushtadir aham. To cover my body, I use whatever is available, whether it be linen, silk, cotton, bark, or deerskin, according to my destiny, and I'm fully satisfied and unagitated. Kwachich chayam disho paste trina pasnamsma basmasu kwachit prashada paryan ke kasi pao va pare chaya. So here's the verse. <clears throat> sometimes I lie on the surface of the earth and sometimes on leaves, grass, or stone. Sometimes on a pile of ashes, or sometimes by the will of others, in a place on a first-class bed with pillows. Hmm. Any preference here? No. Okay. The learned Brahmin's description indicates different types of births for one who lies down according to the body. <clears throat> sometimes one takes birth as an animal, and sometimes as a king. When he takes birth as an animal, he must lie down on the ground. And when he takes birth as a king or a very rich man, he is allowed to lie in first-class rooms in huge palaces, decorated with beds and other furniture. Such facilities are not available, however, at the sweet will of the living entity. Rather, they are available by the supreme limb, will, pare chaya, or by the arrangement of maya, as stated in Bhagavad Gita, ishwara sarva bhutanam vridhe jirnatishtati, Brahmayan Sarva Bhutani Yantra Rudrani Mayaya. The Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart, O Arjun, and is directing the wanderings of all living entities who are seated as a machine made of the material nature energy. The living entity, according to his material desires, receive different types of bodies which are nothing but machines offered by material nature according to the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. By the will of the Supreme, one must take different bodies with different means for lying down. Omagyan timirandasya gena jena salakaya chaksu un militam yena tasmai shri gurave namaha nama un vishnu padaya krishna prastaya bhutale shri makti bhakti vedanta swami tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine Vanchakalpa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Pavacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivasadi Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So here this personality who Prahlad Maharaj has just come across, he's like, he's like the python man. 
Python just stays in one place and doesn't move and whatever comes by way of the arrangement of the material nature, he, he accepts. And so he's very detached from everything, from comforts or discomforts, it doesn't. See, because the principle is that these are both two sides of the same coin. Material energy is divided into opposites. <clears throat> and everything is understood in terms of its relative opposite. So here, because he's not concerned about anything material, and he knows that his body is just a combination of material ingredients, he knows he's not the body, He's not concerned what happens to the body or what doesn't happen to the body. He accepts whatever comes by the way, the arrangement of the Lord through the material energy. So this is complete detachment. <clears throat> He's not uh, making any arrangements for any uh, personal needs or any arrangements for any personal uh, comforts or any arrangements for any personal protection. He simply accepts whatever happens like this. And this is more like the sannyas order of life, or the, you might even say the Paramahansa, who <coughs> simply engages in devotional service and uh, accepts whatever the Lord arranges by the arrangement of the Lord. Um, sometimes we find that in order to do one's service, we have to make some arrangements we have to create, we have to make some efforts to get something in order to do this service. But those are not mentioned as something that is extraneous because those are needed for devotional service. But the, the devotee depends on the Lord in every situation. So here he's just depending on the Lord. And for one who is engaged in devotional service, the Lord always takes care of his devotee. He doesn't neglect that. In fact, Krishna likes to do that service. He likes to make arrangements for his devotees so that his devotees can have whatever they need and so they can you know, execute devotional service with complete uh, absorption like that. Materialists are always worrying about what they don't have or what they have and, they, and it doesn't really fulfill their needs so they want to get something else. I got one computer, I need another one. I have one car, I need another one. They're always switching their material things in life or material situations in life, thinking it will improve the quality of life or improve their ability to experience happiness. And that's what goes on in material life. And therefore they waste time not pursuing the real goal of life, which is Dato Brahma, Jigyasa, to find out who I am and what is my purpose in life and how to achieve that. And therefore the whole world, that's why Prabhupada could make these sweeping statements that people are all like animals because an animal simply follows the, the way of the material energy and doesn't have any intelligence to understand what it actually, what is it says actual benefit. So in the same way, <clears throat> people are not much better because the, all they can do is simply try to fulfill the four basic principles of the material body, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. So they think by changing or increasing the quality of these things, they're increasing the quality of life. You know, so then that's the argument they use, you know, like years ago we didn't have such nice buildings with air conditioning and so many facilities to keep comfort or to, to sleep nicely or even food and people were more dependent or had to struggle more for these things. When perhaps they didn't even struggle for them. So they call that advancement of of civilization or advancement of the human race. But advancement of the human race is not based on increasing the animal propensities to a higher quality. <clears throat> advancement of the human race really means to understand where is my next destination in life? After this body, where do I go? 
Some people say, well, it just really doesn't matter. You just eat, drink, and find different ways to become happy, and then when it's all over, in other words, you enjoy as much as possible, and then when it's all over, it's all over. You did your, you did your part, and you, now it's, that's the end. Others say, well, actually they work very hard, and they invest for the future, and they invest for their friends, their family members, and others. They, they want to serve others by working hard and accumulating positions, power, resources, so they can help humanity. And they think that is the uh, success in life. They're a little better than the person who simply wants to satisfy their own senses for in an unlimited way. <laughs> but in any case, it's all the same. You know, some animals we don't go near because they're ferocious, and other animals we go near because they're not ferocious, they're nice. You see a, little, a rabbit, you're not intimidated. You see a snake, you stay away. <laughs> So you see, even within the animal kingdom, there's different types of animals. So within the human kingdom, also, there's different types of human beings. <laughs> and, uh, but no one, hardly any, knows actually the purpose of taking birth or life. And therefore, here we see what is, he's very detached from everything. He doesn't really care what happens. He simply meditating, he's doing his meditation, or he's doing his bhajan, in whatever way he's doing it. And uh, he's satisfied with that, knowing that the body will fall away at some time, so why waste time trying to make it? And Prabhupada always tells that story of Lumasa, Lumasa Rishi, who was a very, very hairy sage who had the benediction that for every hair on his body, he could live one day of Lord Brahma, which is, you know, many, many bi millions of years, maybe even to the billions. And he had a few followers. He was living outside without any shelter. And so his followers were thinking, well, this is Guru Maharaj should have some comfort here. He's going to be around for a while. So they, just, they asked him whether they could build him a structure he said, don't bother, I'm not going to be here very long. <laughs> and so when, he, when you think about that in relationship to eternal time, it's a very sound and very, you know, com completely true statement. It, it, and the, uh, and, you know, even the life of Brahma is immeasurable. It's so small in comparison to eternal time. <laughs> So, but we live eternally. That's our nature. We are like Krishna in that. We have, we, we can be wherever we want to be according to our desires and activities. So that is our, our choice. So by our choice, we wind up in a particular body in a particular situation with a particular set of uh, uh, characteristics and qualities and also some paraphernalia to work with. So this is all based on our desire. So, but that's not really intelligent. Really, the one desire should be to go back home, back to Godhead. <laughs> or at least reach the stage of perfection where one can qualify themselves to go back home, back to Godhead. Either one of those are are the actual goal of life and not to waste time taking care of the material body. Sometimes we should like do a little bit of a, what they call it, a measurement, personal measurement. How much time do I spend eating, sleeping, taking care of my body and how much time do I actually spend worshiping and doing spiritual activities and just compare and you see. And you can see, well, it's a nice way to actually reduce the material needs or material time periods, because a lot of the times, the things we can do, we can do it in lesser time. And the things we need, we actually see we don't need as much as we do when we start to observe. It's like eating. E eating is just more like it's a feature of the mind. <laughs> 
I mean, you can, the body needs something, so you can, you know, you can eat a little something and then go on. But sometimes you think, well, I have to eat a big feast because I need it. <laughs> but of course, Lord Chaitanya's movement is, uh, you know, take prasad. <laughs> so that's another thing. <laughs> so we, we use whatever logic we want according to time, place, and circumstance. <laughs> Today I should feast because Lord Chaitanya said, you know, fasting and feasting is the same thing. <laughs> and there today I should fast because he said his fasting and feasting is the same thing. So there's no difference. So while I'm eating a big feast, I'm actually fasting. <laughs> well, what, we're, what is that saying? We're actually fasting from getting the karmic reactions of eating food that are not offered to the Lord. Because eating on the transcendental platform, or eating food that is transcendental, that's what's offered, doesn't have any re any material reactions attached to it. Sometimes we get a material reaction because we somehow or other don't see. Just like one devotee asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, you, you said that, you know, we could go back to ho back home, back to Godhead, simply by... by uh, eating. So the devotee was kind of indicating like maybe you could give me that service, you know. Jai Sri Panchatattva Ki Jai. And Prabhupada said you can do that if you can, if you actually are in, the, in full consciousness that this prasadam is, is non-different than Krishna. So it's based on not just the activity, but the, mostly the consciousness. So here, we, we don't follow this particular lifestyle here because we have to preach, we have to build temples, we have to do other activities which require maintenance, more maintenance, both of the external and of, the, of our personal needs. And that's, that's also detachment. If we follow Lord Chaitanya's principle of using everything for the service of the Lord and minimizing personal needs, then we're right. We're rightly situated like that. You, know, you can have a a watch that's a fourteen dollar watch, or you could have one that's a hundred and fourteen dollar watch. <laughs> so they both tell time. In fact, these cheap. I had a cheap watch one time, and it lasted for more than twenty years. <laughs> really cheapo. I think it was nine dollars or something, and that was well. Of course, that that was a while back. So nine dollars was was like an average, you know, price for watches at that time. <laughs> after a while, you know, after associating with certain devotees, I realized I don't need a watch, so it's gone. <laughs> no watch. <laughs> it took me about. 25 to 30 years to figure out I didn't need a watch. Because <laughs> I was thinking, well, you know, I have to know what time it is every minute. <laughs> so you'll find out, yeah, there's a lot of things we don't need. And a lot of, and we, but we like them. We say, well, I don't really need it, but I, I kind of like it. <laughs> so that's not so bad, but if it becomes a, you know, and absorption in likings, then we waste time and we can be using those time for other things like that. And so this is interesting here, this whole principle of the behavior of the ideal person. He's simply accepting everything. And he, verse after verse, he speaks about what, what he is, what he's like, and what he really... Basically, it'll come l later to actually, it gets in more of into the philosophical aspects of his practice here, or so-called practice. But our movement is, you know, chanting, dancing, feasting, and philosophy. That's our movement. That, and if we do it in the spirit of detachment, that's the whole point. We eat for Krishna, we, and we take Krishna. We danced for the pleasure of the Lord and for the devotees. We, uh, we take prasadam in order to maintain the body and soul together nicely. And uh, philosophy, you know, we can discuss philosophy and gain greater insight 
into the into the knowledge that has been given to us, so we can uh, become more astute in execution our devotion devotional practice like that. So this is a nice. I mean, it's there in the Bhagavatam. This type of detachment, but it's just showing us what is complete detachment from everything. So uh, detachment without attachment leads to another type of attachment. Because we, have, we see people who are practicing different types of detachment, but they have a tendency to become attached to something else. Just like Prabhupada would say that the hippies, they give up, you know. Some of them were born in rich families and had many facilities available for their comforts and luxuries. They gave up all that. They even gave up their connection with their family members and others. And they were, you know. But then again, they they took on smoking cigarettes and dope and doing all kinds of other things. So they replaced one kind of sense gratification for another kind of sense gratification. So it's not really renunciation like that. It's called Falgunia. Falguni renunciation. There's a liver, li river in Bihar. It's called the Falgun River. And <clears throat> when you you go to the bank of the river, you see sand at a certain point, and then you see the water. It's called Falguni because where the sand is, underneath there is water also. So it looks like there's sand and beach there, but underneath there's water also. That's why it's called Falguni. Falguni means what appears to be something, but it's not what it actually is, or, or faults like that. like that. So that was big years ago. Nowadays, now, after going through that era in, in, in history where everybody was getting rid of things and doing other things, now everybody just wants to go back to the old ways and getting more and more and doing and gaining more and more back to the old system again. So you can see it even today. The young people, they don't have any sense of renunciation. They're just trying to accumulate. And if they do, it's not so much about improving their life. It's just something they just don't become, what we say, eager to, to attain it, so. Now everybody wants to get good education and get a good job and a good position like that in some big corporation so they can and have a lot of money and facility. So it's really hard to preach in this age. It's really extremely hard to preach because even though people may show some external uh, favoritism towards our movement is very rare that you can actually find someone who is seriously wants to make a uh, change in life to come to the spiritual platform. Someone who's really ready to dedicate their life to uh, to God, to spirituality. It's very hard to find that. So Prabhupada knew that, so he made the external points very attractive, that if we make it so attractive, they can't refuse. He said when they come to our temples, the prashadam should be so good that they cannot not come back. They just want to come back. It's so nice. And the atmosphere is so nice. The singing is so nice. The devotees are, are so friendly and accommodating. And creating that atmosphere to attract people because that's what they like. It says that actually they took a, a survey for people who look towards spirituality for some alternatives in life. And one of the things that people are looking for along with spirituality is community. They want some group of people that they can associate with and develop relationships with. That's one of the most, many of the main concerns when they were looking for spirituality. It's in other words, some kind of friendship, community, companionship like that, which is natural. But when you get down to the serious seekers, they're, they're just interested in the process of, you know, bhakti, the way it is, 
that's why one of many of us joined. We just we were just attracted to the whole process and wanted to chant more. We wanted to read Prabhupada's books more. We wanted to learn more, and we wanted we were willing to do whatever Prabhupada or Prabhupada's representatives were telling us to do. It was just so nice. I can remember in the early days of Krishna conscious consciousness. It was just there was no problems. <laughs> We had Krishna, we had all the activities, and all we wanted to do was to serve and chant and dance and take prasadam and just, you know, it was, the devotees were together as a family. It was really quite nice, but then things changed after some time. As our society got bigger and more, there was more facility needed, more money was needed, and then projects developed and so many other things came in with it and started to break down the community and made it more of a, you know, of a program of expansion instead of, you know, just being together, chanting, dancing. And you can speak to some of the people who are there from the old days. They tell, they tell you how sweet it was in the old days when it was small and when Prabhupada would come and it was so intimate and... But now, of course, we we expect expansion. That's what Prabhupada wants, because this is our movement. But to keep that mood of simplicity within the expansion is actually our success, and not become enamored by or what we say inspired to increase on a personal level. Along as the increasing comes on the larger level to try to get more and more material things or more and more facilities like that. Well, I have my apartment, I need a bigger place. I have this, I need more of that, you know, because everybody else is doing it. <laughs> yeah, so devotees can, and the simpler you live, the easier it is to execute devotional service. Hmm. The easier it is to execute devotional service. So sometimes we accept a little bit beyond the simplicity in order to preach, but generally for ourselves we try to be as simple as possible. And that makes devotional service nice because you appreciate the activities of devotional service rather than trying to find happiness in the things that are around you. It's more about devotional service instead of the paraphernalia or the facilities that you have. And that's one of the principles of fall down in Krishna consciousness that people get attached to the externals. It's called Ranga Tarangini. That one, I remember when we used to do Sankirtan, we would go out and collect money. And sometimes we would collect, I mean like in one week when we would collect, this was like 30 years ago, we'd collect 2,500 or $3,000 in one weekend. And we would work, like, from early morning until late night every day. And we were just making so much money. But at the end of the weekend, we were, like, wiped out. You know, our sadhana was just destroyed. But we were thinking, wow, we got so much money. <laughs> so we were judging our success by, you know, how much we accumulated and not by, you know, whether we were actually more Krishna conscious or not, and most of us wasn't. <laughs> we were just trying to recover. <laughs> it was like that. And, and that went on as success. And that was seen within our society. It's like, how many books do you distribute? That considered success. Or how much money are you making? That's considered success. Or how many disciples do you have? That's considered success, you know. But it's not about, not so much emphasis about, you know, what is the purification of your existence? Well, your consciousness is becoming more devoted to Krishna, you're becoming more attached to Krishna, you're more eager to perform the, the sadhana of bhakti as opposed to just becoming more and more materially uh, full. <laughs> and that goes on. 
And therefore, we give a lot, in our society, we give a lot of respect to people who have all these things. And we think, well, that's advancement. But advancement is not that. Advancement is the purification of the heart. <laughs> so you might find someone who is, nobody knows, they're in the back room cleaning pots, they're engaging in menial service throughout the day. They're more advanced spiritually than people who may have so many external, you know, portfolios about their Krishna consciousness like that. So one should focus on the essence. And whatever Krishna sends, that's fine. And then the devotees can be happy for what Krishna sends. Okay, so we'll stop there and see if there's any comments or questions like that. You want to hear a, a COVID joke? <laughs> Somebody just told me this one. Two mice are talking to one another, and one mouse says to the other mouse, did you take the vaccine? The other one said, I'm going to wait until the human experience is over, then I'll take mine. <laughs> Your human exper experiment is done, <laughs> then I'll take the vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that will require some purport, but I'm not going to give it. <laughs> so <laughs> yes. Yeah, you can share one joke. Uh, Are you good at telling jokes? No. Well, anyway, try. <laughs> uh, asking uh, why uh, why political and leaders uh, don't uh, don't kush it. Kush it, no? Kush it. Zakaj se ne kushjo? Politiki. So much because this virus go from uh, human being to human being. <laughs> human being to human being. Yeah, not, uh, they are not human being. <laughs> oh. Okay, that's pretty good. <laughs> we'll give you an 8 out of 10 for that one. <laughs> Thank you, we appreciate any contributions to the... <laughs> Okay, so uh, anything else? All right, we'll stop here, and thank you very much. Shumat Bhagavatam Ki Jai.